Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stabenn County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 112. This is the Friday, August 26th, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week at number one, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh becomes a murder suspect. At number two, it ends with us by Colleen Hoover. A battered wife raised in a violent home attempts to halt the cycle of abuse. At number three, Verity, also by Colleen Hoover. Lowen Ashley is hired by the husband of an injured writer to complete her popular series and she uncovers a horrifying truth. At number four, Ugly Love, also by Colleen Hoover. Tate Collins and Miles Archer, an airline pilot, think they can handle a no-strings-attached arrangement, but they can't. And at number five, All Good People Here, by Ashley Flowers with Alex Kirster. A journalist who returns to her hometown vows to find a missing girl and solve a 20 year old cold case. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week at number one, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. The actress and filmmaker describes her eating disorders and difficult relationship with her mother. At number two, The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. How trauma affects the body and mind and innovative treatments for recovery. At number three, Path Lit by Lightning by David Moranis. The life story of the Olympic athlete, All-American football player, and Major League Baseball player, Jim Thorpe. At number four, Diana, William, and Harry by James Patterson and Chris Mooney. A biography of the late Princess of Wales and her sons. And at number five, Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. The daughter of a Korean mother and Jewish American father and leader of the indie rock project Japanese Breakfast describes creating her own identity after losing her mother to cancer. This week we've got an entire fantasy edition of Library Connections, so all four titles I'm recommending are fantasy. Kicking things off with our first recommendation, and this is the new novel by Sienna McGuire. It's called Be the Serpent. It's an October day novel. It's not anywhere near the first book in the series. She's into the teens now with this series, so just FYI for those who aren't familiar with it. October day, that's the gal with the sword on the cover. She's what they call a changeling, so she's half Fae, her mother, in other words, is native of fairy, and actually a firstborn daughter of Oberon, and half human. So that's where you're starting out. So with that little background, let me tell you a little bit about the new novel, Be the Serpent, which is getting fantastic reviews, and I can't wait to read it. McGuire's newest October Day novel places the titular hero in the center of dealing with with the foundations of fairy itself. October has accomplished one of the hardest quests of her life. She got married. Now, 
with a husband and found family surrounding her, she has finally earned a respite from her duties to the realm from the Queen of the Mists herself. Of course, no hero really gets a break. October finds that death has struck again, far too close for comfort. And an old ally turns out to be an even older enemy. While she has fought for her life, her friends, and her realm over and over again, this time, October must battle for Fairy itself. When the costs of the broken ride are counted, they may be higher than she can pay. Verdict. The latest reveals from the ever-expanding history of Maguire's world still hold surprises. While previous plot threads are closed off to prepare for the latest cliffhanger. This action-filled urban fantasy series shows no signs of slowing down. And that's the Starred Library Journal Review. And on a reader's note, as mentioned, this is the 16th book in the Toby Day series. If you'd like to start reading the series from the beginning and do a good solid binge read, because this series is a lot of fun, check out the first book, Rosemary and Rue. Our second recommended read for this week is an urban fantasy novel that also features a strong female protagonist. Her name is Mercy Thompson. The novel is called Soul Taken, and it's the new book by Patricia Briggs. Now, if you're not familiar with this series, Mercy is a shifter. She can shift into a coyote, and she has some Native American heritage. She lives with her lover in a pack of werewolves, so you need to know that. Or when I tell you about the book, you'd be like, what are they even talking about? Because this is the 13th book in the series. So having said that, let me tell you about the book. A new threat comes to Washington State's Tri-Cities in Briggs' solid 13th Mercy Thompson urban fantasy. Secrets come out and tensions rise among the Columbia Basin's shapeshifter pack when it is implicated in the disappearance of Wolf, the vampire who has been stalking shapeshifter mechanic Mercy. Marcilla, the mistress of the local vampire Seath, threatens to end the alliance between vampires and werewolves if the pack can't prove its innocence by finding and returning Wolf to her. Complications arise when a series of dead bodies turn up throughout the Tri-Cities in murders that mimic the killings featured in a new horror movie and appear to be magical in origin. With the pack in danger and Mercy herself targeted by the murderer, she and her allies race to uncover who or what is doing the killings. As they peel back the layers of the mystery, they find themselves enmeshed in a more complex and much older supernatural plot. Briggs does a good job integrating exposition into her story, offering fans a refresher course on the characters and their backstories, and even allowing new readers to jump in fairly easily. This keeps the series going strong. And that's the Publisher's Weekly Review. And if you want to binge read and start out with book one, you want to check out the book called Moon Called. Moving on to our first audiobook recommendation for this week. This one is a classic. It's the Ursula Le Guin novel, The Left Hand of Darkness, narrated by the outstanding narrator, George Goodow. George Goodell narrates this classic novel with gravity and emotion. He smoothly shifts his voice between that of the outsider Jen Li Ai, a black man with a masculine voice who is acting as an ambassador on the distant planet Gethin, and the more androgynous voices 
of the gender-shifting humanoid aliens. The people of Gethin challenged Genley's and the listeners' notions of masculinity and femininity. The story is full of political intrigue and captivating descriptions of the chilling landscape. Rudell will transport listeners to the distant snowy reaches of winter, where Genley and the soft-spoken and determined Estravan struggle to cross glaciers and fight to establish Gethin's place in the community between worlds. Le Guin won the Hugo and the Nebula Award for this tale, and it remains a genre-defining feminist work. And that's the audio file review. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the first book and audio in a series. The series is called The Ministry of Curiosities, and this first book is titled The Last Necromancer, written by C.J. Archer. The audiobook is read by Shiromi Asiro, a waif, her abductor, and a twist you won't see coming. For five years, Charlotte, a.k.a. Charlie Holloway, has lived as a boy in the slums. But when one theft too many gets her arrested, her only means of escape lies with a dead man. Charlie hasn't raised his spirit since she first discovered she could do so five years ago. That time, her father banished her. This time, she brings even more trouble upon herself. People are now hunting Charlie all over London, but only one man succeeds in capturing her. Lincoln Fitzroy is the mysterious head of a secret organization on the trail of a madman who needs a necromancer to control his newly made creatures. There was only one known necromancer in the world, Charlotte, but now there appears to be two. Lincoln captures the willful Charlie in the hopes that the boy will lead him to Charlotte. But what happens when he discovers the boy is in fact the young woman he's been searching for all along. And will she agree to work for the man who held her against her will and for an organization she doesn't trust? Because Lincoln and his ministry might just be as dangerous as the madman they're hunting. So if you're looking for an adventurous fantasy tale, you might check out this one. Want more reading, listening, and viewing recommendations? Check out the Tech and Book Talk blog, which offers weekly recommendations, and the back catalog of Library Connections videos found on the Southeast Bend County Library's YouTube channel. The address for the Tech and Book Talk blog might be a little small there. It's ssctech.com. And now for our next section next week at the library offering a brief look at the programs being hosted by the library on and off site for the week ahead of us that's the week of august 29th through september 3rd 2022 this information is also found online just visit the library's website found at ssclibrary.org and click on the big bold calendar link you'll see near the top of the page and on a registration note, registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on-demand access variety. You can register for programs through the library's website by dropping by the library or just giving us a call. On Monday, August 29th, there are no programs in library land. Happy reading, and just a tip, you can always check out ebooks or audiobooks through the digital catalog found online at stls.overdrive.com or through its companion app, Libby. 
So you have access to library content 24-7, which is always cool. Kind of expected in the world today, but for somebody of my vintage, I still think it's cool. And I'm digressing. Let's move along to Tuesday, August 30th. We have two programs in Libraryland. The first is Adult Scrabble, which will be held in the library's reading room from 9 to 11 a.m. And then from 10 to 10.30 a.m., we have Storytime with Miss Sue. The story time is being held at the library. On Wednesday, August 31st, we have four programs in library land. The first is Dive into Kindergarten Story Time from 10 to 10.30 a.m. This story time is intended for little ones who are just about to start school, and the program will be held in Fallbrook Park. Then from 1 to 3 p.m., we have the weekly Mejong, which will be held in the library's reading room. From 6 to 8 p.m., there's the Corning Adult Writers Group. This is a hybrid program, which is held both at the library and via Zoom. And then from 6 to 7 p.m., the August Virtual Tween Baking with Miss Abby. The location of this program is both in person and online. In that, if you register for this program, and you do have to register, you can come by the library between 6 and 7 on the 31st and pick up your baking kit. And then you'll bring up YouTube at home and access the library's YouTube channel where you'll find Miss Abby showing you how to make the baking item of the month. And for August, it's No Need Rosemary Bread. So again, you will pick up your baking kit between 6 and 7 p.m. on the 31st if you've registered for the program. On Thursday, September 1st, there are no programs in library land. And to have something on this slide, let me tell you just a little bit about Hoopla, if you're not familiar with it. Hoopla is one of the library's two digital catalogs. Hoopla is found online at hooplaDigital.com because you can use it on a computer or you can download the Hoopla app to your mobile device or smart TV. And you can access comic books, ebooks, audiobooks, TV shows, movies, and albums on demand. You can check out 10 items per month through Hoopla, and they are instantly available. So just FYI. On Friday, September 2nd, we have three items to bring to your attention. The first is the debut of the monthly book review by Michelle Wells, which you'll be able to access through Michelle's writer's blog, which is found at Story Musing. Dot blogspot.com. The second program is Science Time Online with Miss Abby, which runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m., and you can access that through the library's Facebook page. And then at 1 p.m. is the debut of the new edition of Library Connections, a weekly readers and listeners advisory video cast, which you can access through Facebook and YouTube. And those are our programs for the week. Just a reminder, the library will be closed on Monday, September 5th in observance of Labor Day and will also be closed on Friday, September 9th for staff training. Otherwise, we'll be open our regular hours in September and those hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday. And briefly, here are our library programs contacts. Should you have any questions about any library programs, let us know. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great holiday weekend.